Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to how to configure the LM317 voltage regulator. So the LM317 is a very popular voltage regulator and one of the reasons it's so popular is be because its output is actually adjustable. So you can adjust it to the voltage you're working on for a particular project. Just a note in case you don't already know, I have a maker's store at forstronics.com where I sell a lot of different things. I add new things every month, and one of the things I'll be selling is the LM317 voltage regulator that I'll be covering in this video. Let's get started. Okay, what is the LM317? Well, it's a linear regulator. It's a voltage regulator. What does that mean? Basically means that you can input a raw or unregulated DC or regulated DC value, and you'll get a steady, constant voltage DC output. So even if that DC input varies, it'll maintain a constant output. So the LM317 in general is, is very popular. In fact, it's made by multiple vendors. So if you look it up, you'll see multiple vendors, Texas Instrument, On Semiconductor, ST Micro. One of the reasons the LM317 is so popular, especially among makers, is if you're doing prototyping and you don't have a lab adjustable power supply, you can use a steady or a constant voltage power supply and use the LM317 to adjust the output voltage based on the projects you're working on. So if you need 5 volts for something or 3.3 volts, you can sort of use this to, um, to get the voltage you need for whatever prototyping you're doing. Now one thing to note though is since this is a linear regulator, the output voltage always has to be lower than the input voltage. So you can't have an input voltage of 3.3 volts and an output voltage of 5 volts. Now you could have an input voltage of 5 volts and have an output voltage of 3.3 volts. And just a little comparison, this is a linear regulator. The advantage of a linear regulator is it's low noise output and it's very easy to configure. The other type is the switching regulator. Now the switching regulator is more efficient, so less power loss from the input to the output. They can be smaller simply because they're more efficient and their output can actually, depending on the type of switching regulator it is, a buck or a boost, the output can be higher voltage than the input. So switching regulators, they're also a little more complex to set up because they need inductors and things like that, but they're very widely used today because of their high efficiency. So you can see the package configuration for the LM317. I have the uh, through-hole version and they have a couple different packages, but this is the most widely popular. So one, two, and three are the pins. Please note that pin two is actually tied to this tab up here. So Something to note, you know, if you're driving 1.5 amps through here, it's max, you're probably going to want to attach some kind of heat sink to this tab up here. So here's the basic circuit to set it up. You have two resistors, one is a fixed and one is adjustable, and it's the adjustable resistor that actually allows you to change the output voltage based on what you're trying to do. These capacitors are optional, and I'll, I'll talk about them in a second. So how do we know what the voltage is going to be on the output? Well, there's a formula in the data sheet for calculating that. So basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to control this I adjust current that will basically set the output. And this reference voltage that they have here, 1.25 volts, is actually the voltage drop between the output and this spot right here. But that's why they're using it in the calculation. So here's the main calculation for getting V out. Now one thing we can do though is I adjust is very small, lower than um, 100 microamps. So we can typically ignore this term. So we can just kind of ignore that this doesn't exist because it has such little effect on the rest of the equation. So what I'm going to do, here they're, they're using an R1 of 240 ohms. So you want to use something around there, but I'm going to use, I have a resistor that's about 330 ohms. I want my V out, for our example, I'm going to have a V out of 3.3 volts, and then I'm going to solve for R2, because that's what I'm trying to figure out, this adjustable one. And just to note, the input voltage can be whatever, whatever we want it to be, but it has to be higher than 3.3 volts. So we, we can kind of ignore that as long as we know it's going to be much higher than 3.3 volts. Here's the new equation. So we're going to take, all I did was drop this term and I solved for R2. So here's what we get. I then place in my 330 ohm resistor, my 3.3 volts for V out. My, uh, I'm going to subtract one, and then I get an R2 value of about 541 ohms. So in the example I'm going to show, I'm actually going to use 
a variable resistor so I can kind of tune it to exactly what I need it to be. But we know around what we need our resistor to be. And, you know, even if you put in a, a 539 or 34, you're still going to get very close to 3.3 volts. Now, let me mention these uh, capacitors. So the CN capacitor, 0.1 microfarads or 100 nanofarads, that's there if you're located far away from the input power supply. And it may have a filter, it may not. I personally, I mean, you can put that in. It'll help reduce noise if there's noise and it'll help increase stability. I typically don't have to use that in my setups. The other one is, is the C-out one. And that's basically, that you can see that's a higher value, one microfarad. And that's going to serve like an, sort of like an energy reservoir. So if you have a V-out that's, that's feeding a load that's very dynamic, meaning it swings from a lot of current to no current, this can serve as sort of an energy reservoir to make sure your output voltage on the output of the LM317 stays steady. Okay, let's look at an example of the LM317 in action. Okay, here we have a example circuit with the LM317. Here's actually the LM317. Here's my fixed resistor connected across the adjustment and the output. Here is my variable resistor, my adjustable resistor that's connected to the adjust and then to ground. And then I have basically a power supply that I'm, I'm feeding as the input. And then my output is just fed to a 100 ohm resistor. So I know this is sort of a chip package, but this is actually a resistor here. So I have a DMM connected across the load so we can measure the voltage. Here's my input. And I input just about 8.8 .8 volts. So I pick like a random value. You can see that we're not quite where we want to be, 3.25. I mean, that for most applications, that may be close enough. So I'm going to adjust the resistor a bit. And basically, I'm going to tune it to about 3.3 volts. Looks like I get to about 3.28. Yep. So once again, there's the, the setup and just a quick example of the LM317 in action. Very easy to set up, very easy to use. Next thing I wanted to show you was the data sheet. And I know some people aren't big fans of data sheets, but I just wanted to show you that actually the LM317, because it's so widely used, they have a lot of different configurations or ways to use it. Here's an example where they show a more advanced setup where they put in some protection diodes. So they say, you know, if you're going to have a high voltage out he output here, we recommend having a protection diode that prevents high voltage from going back into the IC from the capacitor and sort of adds a, a path through it to flow. Uh, what else is showing? Oh, here they show basically, you know, I mentioned you could sort of use this as an adjustable power supply for doing your prototyping. Here's a setup where they actually show you how to build a laboratory power supply with adjustable current limit and output voltage. So a little more advanced, and then a, a bunch of other configurations I'm not going to go into. But once again, very widely used, very versatile voltage regulator. Okay, that's it for how to configure the LM317. If you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter, and you can also purchase the LM317 at forcetronics.com. And like I mentioned before, every month I'll be adding new products to forcetronics.com, so please check it out every once in a while. Thank you for watching.